You know, a lot of times when I come across a new plugin, primarily a premium plugin, I quite often wonder how the developer decides how much money they're going to charge for that plugin. Is it based on how much time they put into the plugin, how much research they had to do with it, or maybe it's just directly related to how many lines of code are involved with that plugin. Anyways, it is something that I've asked myself many times over the years, and I don't think I've ever actually asked the developer that question. However, today I get to tell you about a plugin that is free that I don't necessarily think should be free. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I'm teaching you everything that you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do plugin reviews and tutorials, plus I wanna give you all of those little tips and tricks that are gonna help you be more successful. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on and of course so that you get notified as soon as I upload a new video. On a personal note, I am going to let you know that YouTube is making things really difficult lately starting in October, November, December of 2025. Retaining views, getting views, getting noticed, all that stuff is getting more and more difficult. So the only way that you can let YouTube know that this video is any good is by hitting that thumbs up and of course leaving a comment in the comment section down below. So please, Help me get this video out to more people. It's simple, it's free, and it only takes a second. All right, so today we're gonna be talking about button commands. It's available from the Game for Freak website. I'm gonna put a link to it where I always do down in the video description down below. So like I said in the intro, this is one of those plugins where I don't really think that this should be free. However, it is, I imagine it's going to stay free. I can't see somebody changing their pricing model just because of a video I put out. Anyways, I want you all to take advantage of this plugin because I think it's super cool and I cannot wait to see the cool things that people come up with to do with this plugin. So just like the description says, this Rust plugin turns electric buttons into command triggers, allowing you to execute commands when pressed. And that is server side commands or console commands. So any plugin that you can think of that has console commands attached to it, and by that I mean they're not chat commands, they're not in-game commands unless you're doing it through the F1 menu, but server console commands, you can trigger those commands using an electric button in the game when you're using this plugin. There are, of course, permissions associated with this because you don't want just anybody to be able to set up these electric buttons in order to trigger different commands. We've also got a plethora of commands that we can use to actually use the button commands plugin. These are all going to come in really handy in a couple of minutes. And then, of course, we've got what it's going to look like in our data file after we've turned an electric button in the game into one of these command buttons. Don't worry, I'm going to go through all of this. This is going to make sense. Don't worry about that. All right, so as you can tell by the change of scenery here, I'm actually doing this on a brand new server that's literally less than 24 hours old. So you're actually going to watch me perform the process of installing this plugin directly right out of the box. We can pretend like I've never seen it, even though you know that I have. So we're just going to download the plugin. We're going to go into our plugins folder, and we're just simply going to drag and drop it from our downloads folder directly into our plugins folder using this built-in file management system. Let's just have a look here and make sure that it's actually there. And there we are, button commands. We're going to go over to our console. We're going to do o.reload button commands in console just to make sure that the plugin is actually up and running. And there we go. We're good to go. So now let's go in game and I'll show you what this is all about. But while we're waiting for me to log into my actual test server, I'm just going to show you this little screenshot here right now. And I want somebody to tell me in the comment section down below, what do you think we're looking at right now? All right, so I've just set something up here real quick. I've got a bunch of generators, I got a bunch of splitters, and I have a whole plethora of buttons that are hooked up to nothing, but they do have power going to each one. I'll explain why in a minute. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to tell the plugin that we want to use one of these buttons as one of the button controls. But before we can do anything with the plugin yet, we have to make sure we've granted the permissions to the group that we want to be able to create these buttons. So in our case, we're just going to add this permission to the admin group of which I'm already a member of. So I'm just going to bring up my admin menu and this one is by chaos code. We're going to go into permissions. We're going to go into group and then admin. And then we're going to go over here. Yes, you can see that right here. And we're just going to grant this permission right here. As far as permissions goes, I use admin menu from chaos code. I also use permissions manager from code fling. I use them both. I, in fact, I have them both on every single one of the servers that I use. Permissions manager is free. Admin menu from chaos code is obviously a premium plugin. So let's head back over to the doc page. Let's scroll down a little bit to go to the commands. And we've got this one right here, bc.add. So button commands 
add, obviously. So we're just going to copy that. We're going to go back in game and we can use that command that we just grabbed from the doc page. So let's open up our F1 menu. Let's do bc.add. And as you're going to see there in chat, it says button registered successfully. It now will run the assigned commands. We're going to get into which commands it's going to run in just one second. I'm going to add two more buttons to the plugin real quick. Okay, great. So now we've added these three buttons to button commands. What's it going to do? So to find out what we've done now that we've created these buttons, we need to go to the data file for button commands. So we're just going to go back to our file manager. We're going to go into the oxide section and we're going to go into the data folder this time. And we're going to open up this file right here called button commands.json. And as you can see in the data file, we now have these three buttons in there and all of the different characteristics for each one. So let's just have a look at one at a time. So do we require the button to be powered? Yes or no, by default, this is set to true. Disable output power when the button is pressed, this is default set to true. Do you want it to run a random command? In some cases, you might want this to run a random command. This is where your creativity is gonna come in. So which commands are you gonna put in there and do you want it to randomly select one of those commands? By default, this feature is set to false. If you do want to be able to run a random command, from the list of commands that we can put in here, then obviously set that to true. We also have a cooldown on these buttons, so people can't come in there and spam that button and activate whatever command it is that we've got associated to that button. And then of course, we've got the command section. Now, the first time I saw this plugin, there were default commands in there that were generated with each button that was added to the data file. For whatever reason, Viz Entities has removed that functionality, but he did leave it on the doc page, so let's go have a look. Now, if you've ever messed around with plugins, of any kind in the past, you know how important syntax is. So we can just come in here and we can grab this from curly brace to curly brace right here. We're just gonna put that on clipboard for now. And we'll go back to our data file for button commands. And we're just gonna go in between these two square braces and hit enter. And then we can pasta in what we've now put on our clipboard. It's gonna look something like that. So this is gonna give you an idea of what your syntax is gonna need to look like for the commands that you're putting in on each one of these buttons. So this default set of commands gives you a pretty good idea of what are the different things that we can do in here. We can write something to the player in chat, we could run a server command, or we can do something directly with the client, whether that be say something directly to the client, so that the rest of global chat doesn't see it. Or my favorite part is just running server commands by themselves. So I'm actually just going to remove this chat command right here. I'm gonna clean this up just a little bit so that it looks kind of proper. I know this isn't exactly right. And I'm also gonna remove this one client command down here. We don't need that for what I'm going to show you. Sorry, that was just way too messy. I had to clean that up a little bit. All right, so we are gonna do a server command. So anything that we could write in our server console, we can now put in here. So let's just do something really simple here. Let's do env time one. That's gonna change the time. When we press the button, we're gonna change the time of the server to one in the morning. So it's gonna be very dark. So while we're in here, let's also change this button number two to make it so that it's daytime. And then of course, let's save this. Let's go back to our console and let's reload the plugin. So now let's go back in game and see what's actually going on. So it's like daytime out there right now. Let's go inside and hit this button here right quick. And boom, you actually seen it happen on the screen there. It changed it to 1 a.m., which obviously made it really dark out. Let's go back and hit button number two and head outside. And there you go, you've seen it now change the time to 12 p.m., the middle of the day. So, okay, cool, big deal, we can run commands. Now, this is where I want you to let your creativity run wild because there's so many different things that we can do with this. Let's imagine we created a maze where at the end of the maze, there was just a button on the wall. And if the player made it through the maze successfully and they hit the button on the wall, Let's say it called a heli or a supply drop or any number of things. It could just give them a bunch of scrap or it could give them the supply drop directly into their inventory. It can do any number of things. Remember, any command that you can run from a server console, you can program one of these buttons to do. So now if I go back to one of these buttons, let's, let's use the daytime one here. And if I try and press it again, it's going to say in chat, you must wait 55 seconds before you can hit this button again. And that's obviously because we have the cooldown here set to 60 seconds. So this is incredibly important, especially if you're doing a command that if you spammed it, it would cause havoc on your server. So you don't want to allow that to happen. And honestly, 60 seconds probably isn't long enough because trust me when I say that players will sit there and spam that button. Even if they have to wait the 60 seconds, they're going to hit that button every 60 seconds. Of course, depending on what happens as a result of that. If you had it set to drop a supply signal, sure enough, 
they're going to stand there and spam that button. They're going to have somebody outside grabbing all of those supply signals as they drop. But every 60 seconds, you'd be guaranteed that they don't mind sitting there for those 60 seconds. So increase that time when it makes sense to do so. All right. So I've now added two more commands here. I just want to give you a really good idea of what you can do here. So let me press that button right there. So as you can see, it now says server is restarting in five minutes. That's because I've added a button to actually restart the server. Do you want regular players to have access to this? No, probably not, but you could. I don't know what application, but you definitely could do it. So I've also added this button over here to actually cancel that restart process. So let's say you had an admin base or something like that where nobody could get into because it was a protected structure, but you wanted your admins or moderators to be able to hit a button on the wall to restart the server. Why not? You could. Let's say you have an event running on your server. Let's say you have tornado or you have the volcano plugin or something like that, where you can actually trigger these events to take place using one of these buttons. All right, so I've added a couple of lights on top of these buttons here. On one of these buttons, I've made it so that the power doesn't go through the button when it's pressed. And on the other one, I've made it so that it does go through. So as you're gonna see here, I've also changed my cooldown time to zero seconds so that I can do this multiple times. If I hit this button here, you can see that it turns that strobe light on. So on this button, I have power output turned on while this button is being pressed. Exactly the same as it happens in vanilla situations, but now we're making it do two functions. We're making it turn that strobe light on as well as running that command in the background. Now this other button here beside it, it doesn't turn that light on, but it still runs that functionality in the background. As you can see, it changed it back to daytime. So when you're talking about the different things that you could do here, I want you to think about what you could trigger with that button. You could trigger a timer that turns on something else for X amount of time while whatever functionality is happening in the background that you set the server command to be. There's an unlimited number of things that you could be doing with this plugin in combination with these buttons. And man, I can't tell you how much I wanna hear about the stuff that you guys are gonna come up with in the comment section down below. Anyways, let your creativity run away with you because I know that there's so many ideas out there that I can't even possibly wrap my head around, but I wanna know the types of things that you guys all come up with. So leave me a comment in the comment section down below letting me know the cool things that you might come up with if you were able to use these buttons in your server. And remember, even though I don't think it should be, this plugin is free. If you wanna see that tornado plugin that I was just talking about that you could trigger using one of these buttons, check out this video on the left-hand side of your screen. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button down to the left. And please, I'm begging of you, leave a like on this video and leave a comment in the comment section down below. We have to do something. We have to fight back against the changes that YouTube is making to the system because this just isn't working for me anymore. If you haven't yet, check out srtbull.com. There's too many things going on on that website. I can't even begin to tell you about it. Just go check it out. Have a look around. Let me know what you guys think of it. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next week.